I'm back. I'm going to be talking about um, fun times in Atlanta in the 1990s. Uh, this is when I was in my second marriage to whom I am calling Mark. Okay, um, I mentioned before that uh, we went to some very, very fine dining restaurants. One of my favorites was the Abbey um, over, I think it was on Ponce de Leon. I think it's still there, I don't know. But it was an old um, little Catholic church, I think, and um, they turned it into a restaurant. Food was excellent, and it was really cool because um, the way the um, servers, I was going to say waiters, but they don't say waiters anymore or waitresses. Now it's servers because it's um, um, not sexist. <laughs> anyway. Um, the servers were all men, and they were dressed like monks, and that was pretty cool, I thought. Uh, you know, the whole atmosphere is like, you're, you know, like you were just visiting the monastery or something. So um, I really enjoyed going there, and I know that Mark uh, um, would take my daughter there. I know he took her there at least once, but... I remember that he would take her out once a year um, on a date, daddy-daughter date, and I know he took her there once. Um, so, also, um, we went to the Sundial once, which is the um, way up high, uh, the restaurant spins around up over Atlanta, good view. The elevator up is outdoors, like a glass elevator. Um, I don't remember uh, too much. I mean, I remember we took some of his relatives, I think his mom and, you know, maybe his aunt or somebody up there. But um, I do remember the French onion soup that I had. I, that's what I remember about that place. It was really good. It was um, really good French onion soup. Um, okay, uh, I mentioned before, 103 West is where we went on our very first date. Very, very, very nice restaurant. And we would go there on our anniversaries. Um, okay, one time he took me for something special, maybe anniversary or I guess, or birthday or something. But for something special, he took me to this different restaurant, and I can't remember um, where it was or the name of it or anything, but it was an eight-course meal with a different wine pairing to each course. And, you know, it's supposed to be very special, of course, and very it was very expensive. Um, so, I don't remember the food at all. All I remember is that the third, after the third course, three good-sized portions and three glasses of wine. I was like <laughs> nodding out in my seat, and I, I, I couldn't drink or eat anymore. So that was <laughs> disappointing for him, I'm sure. Um, and then I remember another time that was a bummer that he took me to this little, um, little tiny restaurant in Buckhead, which is the more, um, elite area of Atlanta city. And, um, I don't remember what I had. I mean, I was good. I remember it was good, I, you know, and all that, but, um. He ordered quail, and I think I might have had duck, but um, mine was mine was good, whatever I had, but he had quail, I remember, and he also, I think that was Valentine's Day. I'm almost positive. I am positive. That was about one of the Valentine's Days with him, and um, anyway... He ordered a limo, uh, I mean, a stretch limo, and we went to this nice restaurant, and it was a very nice meal for me, and he had the quail, but 
um, coming home, he got really sick. Uh, he had food poisoning, no doubt. I don't remember the name of the restaurant. It's probably not there anymore. <laughs> doesn't matter. But those are my memories. Um, so then I'm going to go into concerts because... Um, now, I told you back in my season one, um, when I got with Bob, that we used to go to concerts. I went to a lot of concerts in um, New York and a few right local in New Jersey and Vermont Jazz, so a lot of great groups there, um, way back in the 70s, right? And now, um, in... Okay, in the whole 80s that I was in California, my season two, never saw a concert. You know, we were in the strict Seventh-day Adventist church. Music is evil unless it's gospel. Even then, you know, no drums. Um, so we never went to a concert the whole time in San Diego. And then... Um, when I got to Atlanta, you know, if you haven't been watching, you need to watch how I evolved, you know, through all this. Um, anyway, once I started, you know, making money at a good job, I wanted to go to concerts because there were so many good ones around. So the first one I went to, this was before I met Mark, um, actually. Uh, when I started working at, at Holiday and Worldwide, which became, is now IHG, Inter Intercontinental Hotels. Um, so when I was in accounts payable, I was only there a little while, right? And I wanted to go see Pink Floyd. And uh, I just asked a co-worker if she wanted to go with me. So yeah, we went together. I barely knew her. And um, we had a blast. I mean, it was the best concert I've ever been to to this day, Pink Floyd. Um, they were so awesome. Uh, it was at Bobby Dodd Stadium at Georgia Tech. Um, and outdoors, you know, uh, it just so happened that there was a few guys sitting right behind us who worked <laughs> at our corporate office. And um, I didn't know them, but the other lady I was with, she knew them. And we passed the joint around. And that was the first time I smoked pot since the 70s. Oh, no. Yeah, since, uh, since the late 70s. That was the first time I smoked pot. Anyway, Pink Floyd was a bomb. Uh, it was so good. And then I had such time, good time that night, so we, she and I, same girl, we said we would go together to the Rolling Stones, we're coming to Atlanta, to Georgia Dome, right? So that was my second Atlanta concert. Well, that one didn't go so well, let me tell you. Um, first of all, uh, honest truth, I mean, I always wanted to see the Stones. I loved their music ever from, from the beginning, you know. Um, but there was a few songs that I had a little problem with. Being a Christian, some of the lyrics, some of the songs, I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, you know, I kind of shied away from because I felt like they, they weren't um, right, you know, for my spirit. Um, so I got to say, when... When I went to the Georgia Dome to see the Rolling Stones, I was totally convinced that they were into satanic stuff. Um, it, was, it was the goat's head soup was all on the background, and that, that's a sacrifice, uh, some kind of satanic sacrifice thing. And Mick Jagger... I mean, when I went to see him, it was because he was like around 50, um, getting close to 50 anyway, you know, to me who was, I was in my forties, you know, I was thinking that he was getting old and who knows how long, how much longer he'll be able to perform. And I want to see him before he gets too old. Right. But 
it just seemed unnatural, the kind of energy that man had. Oh, my goodness. You know, I mean, he never stopped. He was jumping and just prancing, you know, how he prances back and forth on the stage. And it just seemed supernatural. And I do believe, if you believe in God, you have to believe that there is the adversary, the opposite of God. And um, because of the goat's head soup and, you know, he's singing, you know, the, what's that, you know, uh, please allow me to introduce myself, you know, the um, symphony for the devil and those things, you know. Um, it was pretty obvious seeing him in person. I, and, you know, being a spiritual person, a Christian who knows the Bible and all that stuff, I, I really felt like this was, you know, a tribute to Satan. And I'll tell you, if I wasn't with my girlfriend, I would have left because uh, I had a really bad vibe. Even though the music was great, the performance was great, I just got that that evil vibe from the whole thing. And I would have left, but I couldn't leave my girlfriend, of course. And plus, we were in her car. <laughs> she was driving. So I left my car at the job. And um, no, yeah, I left my car at the job. And we were in her car. So when it, the concert got over, it was late, very late. They did a, a good show. And it was very late. And she drank too much. She drank. She had this nasty... Um, I mean, she had like a, a pint of peppermint schnapps she was si sipping on all night, and that would make anybody sick. So um, after the concert, she got sick. We're in the bathroom, and she had real long curly hair, and I'm holding her hair, and she's puking in the sink. It was disgusting, really, really disgusting. And... Um, Afterwards, she was so drunk that, I mean, she could barely walk. And this girl, I mean, I'm a small person. I'm only 5'2", and she's probably 5'8". And, you know, she I can't hold her up, but she uh, somehow she was, like, leaning on me, and I'm trying to carry her pretty much out the door of the Georgia Dome. And we get out there, and there's no way she's going to be able to drive. But I could, I was fine. I could drive. But, um how do we get to her car? You know, we have to walk like two blocks or so, so to get to the car. And there was no way. I mean, I could barely get her out of the Georgia dome. And we, so she's just like laying on the um, curb in front of the Georgia dome and everybody's leaving. And I'm like, you know, she's saying, call my dad, call my dad. I'm thinking, I'm not calling your dad. It was a weeknight. We were supposed to go to work the next day. And I'm like, I'm not calling your dad in the middle of the night. You know, it was around midnight. Uh, <laughs> I'm not calling him, bothering him in the middle of the night. I said, you know, we're going to get to your car. And we actually waited there. I mean, everybody left. We were like one of the only people around that was left. We waited there until she sobered up enough. Till like two hours passed so that she could walk to the car. And then, you know, I drove back to the job, to the Ravinia over there on the perimeter by Ashford Dunwoody, um, and got my car and went home, right? And um, it was like five o'clock in the morning. And, you know, I didn't want to call. I could have called Mark to come get us, too, but I didn't want to bother him because he had to work the next day, too. I didn't want to bother him at, in the middle of the night, wake him up and tell him you got to come to the Georgia Dome, pick us up because the other girl's drunk. I could. I didn't want to do that. So anyway, I got home. It was like 5 o'clock in the morning by the time I got home. And um, just I went to work the next day. She had taken off the next day, but I went to work the next day. Because it was only I was only on the job for like a year or less, so I didn't feel like you know I didn't want to take time off, and um, I went in. I remember that day. I was like I was like half dead. I was bad, and I was like I will never ever do anything with that girl again. <laughs> and I didn't. Plus, I think she might have stole a hundred dollar bill from me because I had a hundred dollar bill in my wallet, 
And before we went, we, we stopped at um, KFC and got some fried chicken. And when I went to pay for it, that bill was gone. I had another 20 that I could pay with, but the bill was gone. And I, I mean, she must have took it, I guess. I don't know what else could have happened to it. So um, that was my first two concerts now. Let's see, there was more. Okay, um, so Mark and I, I already told you in the previous episode about um, how I wasn't much into country music, not at all at that time. I couldn't stomach it. I just had something against it. I don't know. And um, I, I told you I walked out of the Charlie Daniels concert after about the third song when I was with him once at the Opryland um, in Nashville. But uh, we couldn't we couldn't agree. You know, I always wanted to go to concert. I'm always like, oh, this this one's in town. This one's coming. You know, and he he was not into rock music at all. So I. Um, got him the only thing we, we could agree on at Chastain Park which is a great venue in Atlanta such a nice small little amphitheater outdoors so any seat is a good seat and um, the price was not bad or anything it was a great it's a great place great concert venue one of the best so um, <clears throat> I showed him the whole you know season schedule couldn't agree on anything except the only one was ray charles so we did go to see ray charles once um he was really too old he didn't sound that great but the rayettes were were they were good and <laughs> they were the whole show was the rayettes really so that was okay that was good um and then we also, I did go with um, my husband to um, two times we went to the uh, Georgia Dome. They have this, used to be back then, there was a radio station, Fox 97, I think it was. Maybe it's still there. But they only played oldies. And, I mean, they would do a show every, every year at the Georgia Dome. And they would, I mean, a big show. They would have like 20 or 30 bands. It would be like all, it would be like from pretty much from noon to midnight. And they would have like 20 or 30 different bands. All of the old groups that were still together that could still do it. I mean, they would all be there. All the old doo-wop groups from the 50s and all the, um, you know, the, the groups from the early 60s. So, um... Herman's Hermits was usually the headliner. Um, the one year we went, it was Herman's Hermits. Um, he, and they were always there, but they were usually the headliner. Um, and, I mean, you name it, they were all there and they were so good, all, all of them. And, and even before it started, it started out in the parking lot. And they would have bands like the One Hit Wonders would be just in the parking lot. And then all the good ones that had more than one hit would be on the stage afterward they were all there i saw them all um it was really awesome and i went to another one of theirs earlier before i even met mark when i first came to atlanta um just me single mom after i got a job of course uh and i realized all these great groups come to atlanta you know and um i took my boys i remember uh, the twins, they didn't want to go, but I wanted to expose them to, you know, some popular music, even though they were oldies, you know, but, you know, I wanted to expose them to it and they, cause they never heard it growing up cause we didn't have music in our home except Christian. That's all we did the whole time, you know, until I moved to Atlanta, I was, I call it my lost decade of the eighties because we didn't watch any TV, didn't go to the movies, didn't listen to any of the popular songs on the radio. So that was my lost decade. I was just totally immersed in the church and raising my kids. And, you know, that was it. So, um, 
I took my boys to this this one, and it was the same kind of concert, the Fox concert, but they moved later to the Georgia Dome. But the one I took them to was in Duluth, and um, it was outdoor concert in Duluth, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. My boys didn't appreciate it. They were young, you know, they were 10, 11 years old, uh, 11 probably, but they, they didn't appreciate it. They didn't even want to go. I had to drag them, but... Um, I, I enjoyed the heck out of it, and I knew I need to see more concerts because I miss that stuff. So, um, Georgia Dome with the oldies. The second one we went to, we brought Lauren, I think. I don't know what my daughter to the first one or the second one, one of them, I don't remember which one. But anyway, the second one, the headliner was Little Richard. Herman's Hermits were still there, but Little Richard was a headliner, and they saved him till the end, right? <laughs> he was off the chain, man. He was, he had so much energy. He was so good, but the funniest thing was that he wouldn't quit. I mean, they didn't bring him on until the end, right? Uh, I don't know what time it was, but it was late, and that man had so much energy. I don't know. I think he probably had to be on Coke. Don't know, but man, he just kept going and going and going. And it was so late. People were starting to leave, you know, after he played how many, you know, five songs or something. People were starting to leave because of very late. And a lot of them had been there all day. We were there like all day. And um, he just kept on going, and we stayed. And then, you know, the place was emptying out. So we moved up. We moved way up to the front. I mean, he kept going, and it became like a little private party. But there was only like 30, 40 people there. That's all that was left in the Georgia Dome. We were just in the front two rows with little Richard, and he just kept on going. He just kept on going. It was so great. It was so cool. And they wanted him to leave. I mean, they were blinking the lights on him and everything, and he wouldn't stop. He said he was just laughing at him. He said, I, I ain't stopping for nobody. Here I am. You know, and it was great. It was so good. And we stayed. Uh, I don't know. We stayed like we were one of the last to leave. It was the it was the coolest thing. It was really great. What can I say? Um, I don't know if he's even still alive. You know, I heard that he was a Seventh Day Adventist, by the way, which I was. Um, and that's interesting. Uh, you know, they also you know, I heard. I guess he was homosexual. I guess. I mean, that's what I always heard, you know, which is interesting that he was a Seventh-day Adventist because they were so conservative, you know. Um, so, I don't know. Anyway, don't know. All I know is that the man could perform. <laughs> he could perform. He could play that piano, and the man could sing, and he had a ton of energy. Okay. Um, so, the other last one that I remember is... Um, and the best, well, one of the best, I, my favorite, probably, uh, well, definitely one of my top three, I would say, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan and Paul Simon, okay, those are two, I have to say, top five, Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, two of my very favorites that I want to listen to anytime. And I got to see them together at Chastain Park in Atlanta, and I brought my daughter to that one. And what a show. Uh, it was so awesome. I mean, I always wanted to see both of them. I always loved both of them. And I got to see them both, even together. They played a couple songs together. Uh, Bob Dylan opened, I, I believe. I think I remember Bob Dylan opened and Paul Simon afterwards. He, Dylan had on a, like an old-fashioned um, tux, uh, like from the 60s probably, It was it, <laughs> he was wearing. And I walked, because in that venue at that time you were able to do this, I walked right up in front of the stage, and I was standing right in front of the stage watching him sing. And 
boy, that did my heart good. <laughs> I love him. I always say he's my soulmate. He's my soulmate. Okay, that's all for tonight. See you next time.